we start talking about the bony mm, joint of the elbow and uh, it's composed by the distal humerus and the proximal forearm and uh, this is just a mechanical uh, uh, constraint for uh, uh, the stability of the elbow because of the shape of uh, the joint but the joint is still enforced in its stability by the uh, ligaments and by the capsule that go all around the um, articulation. Now we show the um, static stabilizer of uh, the elbow and uh, we divide it in the primary in which we meet the ulnar umbral articulation in particular the olecranon and the coronoid process and then uh, we have the complex of the medial collateral uh, ligaments and the complex of the lateral collateral um, ligaments. Uh, the same thing uh, when we talk about the secondary uh, stabilizer, we have the radiohumeral articulation and uh, in, uh, um, uh, we talk about the radial head and the common extensor tendon, common flexor pronator tendon and uh, last but not least um, the capsule. Starting with the uh, ulna humeral articulation that maybe represent the most important bony stabilizer with the coronoid process and with the olecranon. The olecranon uh, is um, a bony stabilizer and uh, is uh, seated within uh, the olecranon fossa in the distal humerus. Uh, so maybe the main contribution uh, of the olecranon is uh, when the elbow is uh, in uh, full extension, uh, giving a constraint. Uh, both in virus and in vagus and um, in uh, rotation. Um, there is a study in uh, which um, is explained how the contribution of the electron to the elbow stability uh, is uh, not so um, important uh, like maybe other uh, structures. In effect, when we will have the resection of uh, most of the 87% of the electron, we uh, will have a server. Uh, instability of uh, the hell bone. This is not the same um, for the coronoid process uh, that maybe is the most important bone stabilizer of uh, the elbow, especially in flexion in which uh, the elbow is uh, stabilized through an interlocking of the coronoid by the ulna with the coronoid fossa by the humerus. And uh, this is uh, explained by the anatomy of the coronoid process uh, that uh, I repeat is the most important uh, bone stabilizer because uh, in um, in the sagittal plane we have an osseous block that prevent posterior translation of uh, the ulna and in the frontal plane we have an anteromedial facet that limiting the virus valgus stress of um, the elbow. The articular surface of uh, the coronoid process is complex and maybe we have four key points. Uh, the first is the semi lunar notch in which we have the joint with the uh, radial head, then we have the apex, then the anterior medial facet, and then the sublime tubercle in which the MSCL is uh, inserted. We can have different shape, we can have different morphologies of uh, the olecranus, so uh, the most uh, of uh, them are not so, uh, not always the same. Uh, many structures have their insertion in, in the coronal of the process, like the articular capsule, the annular ligament, uh, the EMCL on sublime tubercle, as we have said before, and the brachialis spine. There is an important study about the coronoid process did by Giannicola and his uh, group uh, concerning the uh, importance of the coronoid process uh, in uh, the stability of uh, the elbow. They calculate an angle, a coverage angle of the greater sigmoid notch, and they um, have seen that if this angle is uh, closer, the uh, elbow will be much more uh, stable than, uh, like uh, um, shown in the, in the left picture, than uh, in the open angle in which uh, the stability of the elbow could be lower. Uh, this is important in even in the fracture. Because when we have a fracture of the coronoid process, we can have um, a loosening of the stability of uh, the elbow. And uh, it really depends on the fracture sides. So in this kind of fracture, we have a classification, the Regan Moray, that, uh, um, <clears throat> that um, specify that we have a three kind of fracture depending on the sides. And on the type 2 and the type 3, the surgery is needed because the elbow will be unstable without a fixation of the coronoid.
The importance of the coronary process and the stability of the elbow is more important in the virus angle than in the virus. And um, this is uh, demonstrated by this uh, study in which uh, we have uh, um, less than 50% of coronoid gun with, uh, with the radial head okay, and more or the less the stability in the values of the elbow is the same of the um, situation in which we have the radial head okay and uh, um, the coronoid uh, fixed. And if we uh, go on the opposite, uh, the various angle will uh, change if we have uh, a lose of 50% or more of the coronoid. So if we look at the same condition, if we have uh, radial head OK with 50% of coronoid GAN, as uh, shown on the circle, we will have uh, a various angle a lose uh, of the various angle, so an instability in the various of the elbow. So the bone defect of the coronoid affects much more heavily the stability of the of the elbow. We have then the soft tissue stability on the primary st stabilizer. Uh, we talk about the lateral collateral complex ligament. Uh, it's um, formed by four bundles: the LUCL, lateral urinal collateral ligament, the radial collateral ligament then the annular ligament and the accessory collateral ligament. The most important maybe is the um, lateral ulnar collateral ligament, the LUCL, uh, but we have to uh, talk about the cord obliqua and the quadrant ligament because they have to be considered a part of the lateral complex uh, of uh, the ligament. About the um, LUCL, we have three kind of morphologies. The type 1, in which we have a bilobe uh, ligament uh, that um, go to the supinator crest. Then we have the type 2, in uh, which we have the uh, same insertion of the LUCL uh, together with the annular ligament. And then the most of type, we have the type, type 3 in which we have a coalitions with the annular ligament inserts at the broad base of the supinator. So the most of the time the UCL is considered the most important ligament in the lateral side that prevents the posterolateral and rotatory instability of the elbow. But in this study the conclusion are that uh, this is real, but it's real that we have to think to all the complex on the lateral side that uh, is able to prevent the rotator and posterolateral instability of the elbow. Uh, we move to the medial ulnar collateral ligament complex. So we move to the medial side and we have three components, the anterior bundle, we have the posterior bundle and then the transverse the anterior bundle of the medial collateral ligament is an important constraint to valgus and rotational stresses, and mostly with the elbow flexed between 30 and 100 percent. And this is um, more um, important when uh, we have some other comorbidities. So if we have a radial head fracture with the MUCL lesion, we have a severe valgus instability, but the most of this is due to the AMCL lesion. And we can see in the left or in the right diagram, we see that more or the less the stability uh, in the uh, valgus of uh, the elbow is more or the less the same if we have radial head fracture or if we have an intact elbow or if you have a radial head fracture with a posterior bundle of the medial collateral ligament broken. But if we have even the anterior bundle of the medial collateral ligament, look how increasing is the instability in valgus of the elbow. So it's really important that the anterior bundle um, has to be repaired in the case of a lesion. And as we can say during the movement, uh, the most of the tension uh, is uh, during the bend of the elbow between 30 and 100 degrees. The posterior bandel of the medial collateral ligament forms the base of the cubital tunnel and is a thickening of the joint capsule. So we have a loose extension and um, it's tied in the flexion.
In this study, um, is uh, shown how the posterior bundle of the medial collateral ligament uh, could lead to a, um, a lower instability once uh, broken uh, of um, virus and uh, intra-rotational uh, stability. Mm -hmm. Even for the transverse bundle of the medial collateral ligaments, we have to change some ideas because in these two studies uh, I have shown that uh, this is not an accessory ligament but it's a connective part in controlling the valgus stability of the elbow. Then we have secondary stabilizer, we have the radial humeral articulation and in particular the radial head. It has two articular surfaces, the humeroradial joint and the proximal radioulnar joint, with two different morphologies. We have a fovea for the capitulum humeri and a smooth convex circumference for the surface. Of the radial head has two biomechanical roles. The first is transmitting forces across the radiocapitular joint and the second adding tension on the lateral ulnar collateral ligament. Uh, it, it gives various valgus uh, laxity when um, it's broken uh, and um, restored after radial head um, replacement. Anural ligament stabilizes the radial head during fuel rotation. And we have always to avoid capital lectomy as first approach when we uh, meet um, radial head fracture because we increase the high the risk of uh, valgus and posterior lateral uh, uh, instability that can incidate in uh, LUCM lesion or in a uh, ulnar neuro. And this is widely demonstrated in the literature that the radial head has a contribute to the stability of the elbow, especially in the valgus stability. As we can see, less in the virus, but if you have a radial head fracture associated with a ligament lesion, the instability will increase um, absolutely. So every time you observe a non-isolated radial head fracture, the elbow instability increases significantly. Uh, we can find different morphology of the radial head. This is important to know because um, sometimes, especially when we have to fix a uh, radial head fracture, we have to plan the kind of morphology in order to uh, have a better fixation. We, at the end, we talk about the dynamic stabilizer that are represented by the tendons. So we have the common flexor pronator tendon that uh, originating from humeral shaft like the brachialis, the triceps and the biceps. Then we have the common extensor tendon that are originating from the forearm. Uh, the force that uh, this stabilizer exert and the recruitment pattern that is employed remain still an area of investigation even because uh, we start talking about the elbow like one of the most complex joints we have. So, to conclude, we can affirm that injury mechanism give us an indication of the possible associated lesions. Never forget to assess the integrity of the ligamentous complexes that are crucial for elbow stability and to repair them when necessary. When you observe a radial head fracture, you have to check always for posterolateral lateral instability and assess coronoid process and LUCL. When you observe a coronoid fracture, you have to evaluate if it's interested the hapix or the anterolateral facet to identify any possible radial head fracture or MUCL lesion. When you observe an elbow fracture, never forget to check proximal and distal joints because the most of the time the trauma are indirect, so we can have lesion up to the wrist or to the shoulder. Thank you all for your attention.